All right, all right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to go through which RGB five star to pick for your five star selector ticket that will be that we will be getting in two days as of this recording. Um, I'm Kai Hariko, and let's get right into it because I hate long intros. Um, so first of all, I'd just like to clarify that only um, regular, like standard RGB five stars will be available. So unfortunately, no collab units and no limited units. Um, so first of all, in the S tier, the S tier is kind of the like your account will gain so much incredible value from having these, um, whether it is PVP or PVE. This list is focused on both and it's primarily for beginners and mid tier players. First of all, we have Rowana. Rowana is very easy to gear. You can just slap on an HP gear, slap her on a counter set. She will work just fine and do her job she heals whenever the enemy counter attacks or extra attacks pretty much um so she is great into this meta pvp wise but she also has an incredible amount of pve uses uh she is a character that cannot be replaced um i repeat she does not really have any good replacement so i highly suggest you if you do not have her already please pick her to keep in mind is that Rowana is available, if I'm not correct, through Story Summon, Side Story Summons. I might be wrong on this one, but I think she is. Um, so therefore, you might want to pick her there to summon for, but honestly, Rowana is just such a good pick. Such a good pick. Uh, second of all, we have Destina. Destina is such a strong PvP healer. She has some uses in PvE, but primarily she's going to be a revive type of soul weaver in PvP. Um, she does require a little bit more gearing. She wants to. She has an incredibly slow base speed, so you want to um, gain a decent amount of speed on her, and you also want to be a little bul bulky with a lot of effect resistance to do her job, but she cleanses, um, very well. She's a good replacement for Mediator Kawarik if you do not have him or picked him from your ML summon, uh, selector. But she is a great pick into this meta, and I strongly recommend her as well if you do not really have any Reviver or Cleanser on your team, because Destina does both. Uh, next up, we have Lua. Lua is absurdly strong in PvP, but she also requires an absurd amount of gear. So I'm going to put it this way. Um, she is a very, very strong pick, but as a new player, you're not really going to be able to use her efficiently. She has that little bit of Conquer Lilia's vibe to her. You want Lua to go first and you want her to be really fast and you want her to have decent effectiveness to be able to pull what she's supposed to do off. Therefore, keep that in mind that if you do not have very high speed, because this unit wants, she wants 300 speed. She's usable at 260, I would say, but that's still a gamble. Um, you want her ideally around 280. Um, if you cannot even get close to those numbers, um, you either have to be prepared that you're not going to be able to use this unit for a very long time, or just she will be banished. But she is an investment for the future. Um, because as of now, she is so disgustingly strong, um, but she is reliant on going first. Uh, so keep that in mind, maybe not the most new player friendly unit. Uh, she also doesn't have the highest base speed, like the contenders coming right after her here. So she will be a little bit more difficult to gear. Next up we have Pyrrha, she essentially is an opener. She works great for control and enables people like uh, Summerside... Iseria and uh, Silverblade Araminta. Uh, she provides a restrict and unbuffable and pretty much just kind of overtook Cereza's role as an opener. Um, she's just really, really great. Um, she wants to go fast. However, her base speed is faster than Lua's and she provides the... Oh God, I always forget the name of the <laughs> buff. <laughs> the same one as Arrowell, it's um, that she uh, essentially provides some damage mitigation for her team, so she is great. Um, she's a great opener, but she has a little bit of the same syndrome. Uh, she is easier to get than Lua, however, she also wants to go fast. You want her fast, 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 fast. Um, if she does not take the first turn, she's pretty much screwed. Um, then we have Ran. Uh, Ran is more of a cleaver. He cleaver, meaning that you pretty much want to end... 
uh, the game in one turn and just wipe the enemy out. Um, he provides a uh, very much coveted defense break and immunity to his team. Uh, there are a bunch of counters to these three units these days, um, but they are still very, very strong units. Cleave has taken a little bit of a, a punch in this meta with Emil Landy. I'm just going to put it that way, so you won't be able to use him every single time like you would be able to before. But he wants to be really incredibly fast as well. Next up, we have Tamarin. Tamarin is the best PvE healer in the game. I would say that you do need both Rowana and Tamarin on your account, um, unless you want to significantly slow down your uh, account progression. Um, Tamarin helps you in PvE, and Epic 7 has some really tough PvE stuff. Uh, Tamarin will help you in Labyrinth, she will help you in Hunts, and she will help you in Expeditions, in Adventure, Tamarin does it all pretty much. Do yourself a favor and pick her up. She is available through side story um, summons, so you could get her there as well. Um, however, Tamarin is not a bad pick. If anything, she is probably one of the best picks if you do not have her. Iceria is a PvE character that essentially paired with the tamarine will also carry you through pve she has a defense break she has cooldown reset and she pairs amazingly well with tamarine um you these days you want to re-roll your um re-roll your first summon until you get iceria that's how strong she is if you have not done that and need iceria on your account and then this would be the time to get her and compensate for not getting her from your initial summon um, unlike the others, I'm pretty sure Iceria is not available through side story summons. So, um, I'm gonna have to fact check that, but essentially she would be a very, very relevant choice if you do not have her, since you can pick Rowana and Tamarin from side stories. Correct me if I'm wrong though, but I'm pretty sure it is that way. So the S tier are these, these units will bring significant value to your account and bring you a lot of progression and strength. Uh, however, Lua, Pira, and Ran, keep in mind they are very gear intensive and the others will probably provide more for you in the long run and right, right now for your progression to get here for Lua, Pira, and Ran. Uh, and next up we have the 8 here. The 8 here are very strong meta units that provide a lot of value but they are not as universally used or frequently used as maybe the S tier, but they are incredibly powerful. We're going to start off with the rat herself, Shu. Shu is a guild war goddess. Um, she she essentially counterattacks a lot and extra attacks, and she uh, penetrates defense and penetrates your dreams and hopes for the future. Uh, she is a slot machine, but she has a tendency to pop off and she is incredibly strong. Um, if you have all of the above in the S tier and want to get a little bit more into PvP and stuff, then Shu is a absolutely, she is a really good choice. She uh, is really good in RTA and arena defense and she's just an overall very well-rounded PvP hero that I think could use a little bit of fine tuning. But, you know, she is really strong. Next up, we have Senya. Both Senya and Shu provide the anti- or, well, Shu provide the anti-crit uh, buff for your team, while Senya has an innate 50% chance to um, resist critical hits, but paired with Shu as they're, they're- you can see them as best friends, essentially. They're usually paired together, because with Shu, Senya gains a pretty much 100% chance to not get critted. Senya will uh, deal fixed extra damage to you, and pretty much keep provoking one unit and lock them down and counterattacking. She is pretty much used in the same venues as Shu, I would say, when it comes to PvP. And she is an overall very great choice. But with Senya, you do want her own artifact. Without her own artifact, she loses value um, quite significantly. However, she is a very, very strong pick in this meta, um, and a very valid choice if you do not have her. To keep in mind that Senya, Shu, um, and also Politis are all available in the episode 2 summon, so if you have not done that, one of them, you can pick one of them there. Um, Politis 
is a very strong anti-cleaver. She's a good cleaver um, and she's a good disruptor. She does a lot. She essentially also reduces uh, CR gain by 50% and does an extra attack uh, account like an extra slash counter attack whenever um, the enemy uses a non-attack skill. So she can cut and she can cleave. She is a very well-rounded unit that is very valuable to have built for PvP. But she, essentially she is only used in PvP for that reason. Uh, not for that reason, but she's mostly used in PvP, so keep that in mind. But she is a very, very strong PvP pick and is very versatile and shuts down a lot of units and can be a force ban if picked correctly. Next up, we have Sh Sharoon. I was about to say Sh <laughs> Sharoon. Sharoon got buffed and uh, she is a very strong unit now. She can increase cooldowns for enemies and applies Venom. Venom being a buff that decreases maximum health, so she is very strong against HP scaling tanky bruisers. Uh, she wears, down, wears them down and can shut down Mediator, Coeric, and other units that are very dependent on their S3s. A very valuable pick. Um... Probably a little bit more for mid-tier players who already have a lot of units picked. Uh, Sharoon is going to be my pick because I skipped her when she was released because she was dog shit. Um, <laughs> pardon my French. Um, but now she is so great and she, you may have seen her being used in worlds a lot. She is a very, very strong unit uh, that is a control unit. You can put on her put her on Celestines to kind of heal a little bit, but she's not really healer. She's more of a debuffer. Um, next up, we have Celine. Celine is a great, great counter pick to non attack skills. She is great against Ran, for example, because uh, she will do a very, very powerful counter attack whenever they use a non attack skill and she can instantly take a unit out. She is great for Arena. She pretty much holds your opponent hostage to choose um, whether or not she might kill one of theirs if they use the non-attack skill or whatsoever. A lot of people argue that you can just kind of not use a non-attack skill and she won't really like pop off her gimmick. But I still think that she holds a lot of power and I think that she is definitely worth a pick if you don't have her. She's great. Uh, she's very strong and honestly she carries me so hard in so many venues of PvP. Next up, we have Zahok, uh, another unit a lot of people like to criticize. Uh, Zahok is the answer to evasion and also has resource reduction um, and has a very advanced crit tech. Uh, but we're not going to get into that here. But um, if you do not have any answers to evasions like Briar, Witch Isaria, Melim, uh, Karin, then Zahok is going to be your best friend. Um, I would say that your account will probably suffer a lot if you do not have Zahok and you play PvP and the opponent picks like Aiden, Remnant Violet, who has kind of had a resurgence now with the ML Selector. Zahok is a very, very strong pick. Um, honestly, I would probably pick him if you do not have any answer to evasion, like I said, because um, it's very important these days with a lot of evasion coming back. Uh, next up, we have Command Model Laika. She's kind of a luxury pick for people who have very, very high speed. She provides a lot of debuffs, and essentially, she's kind of like she does her thing, and then she, if she does, if you don't win, then you will lose. She will not like cycle like the others. Um, I would say she's a very strong pick, but I would not recommend her for new players. Uh, if you have a lot of speed gear lying around, who does? Um, <laughs> then Command Model Laika might be your pick um next up we have the beats here the beats here are very solid units i would say they are very very used in the meta honestly i don't know if eula belongs in a tier these days or beats here but let's put her in beats here for now uh eula is blue not blue she's green crowd um with the lower hp she gets she will blast you back even harder uh you can really just like shut take down like bursting units and she, she's just an overall really strong and knight um alencia is really good she uh with caused a lot of injury and counters hell hp scaling units uh, and does a lot of extra attacks and quickly builds up injury she's very very strong um next up we have aria aria will protect her team by providing stealth and making the enemies having to focus her uh, she counterattacks, she lifesteals if you build her own lifesteal set, and she's overall a very, 
she's a force to be reckoned with. Arunkia is our um, barrier, anti-barrier uh, damage dealer. She will blast through barriers like it's no tomorrow. And she does that job very well. Mort provides these days a lot of anti-crit buff to your team and will keep countering and defense breaking. A very solid pick. He's more of a fun unit, I would say, but he finally has a spot in the meta. Um, the beats here are actually really good units, but they're not the strongest. Um, so the difference between B tier and A tier, I would say that B tier is probably a little more niche, I would say. Or they, they're just not as, like, prominent as the A tier ones. But the difference, I would say, between A and B is not a lot. Uh, ask me on... I always say this, but ask me on another day and I might, like, switch the units between A and B. <laughs> a and B a lot. Uh, okay, next up we have Lilias. Lilias is supposed to be like the new Lua counter uh, with her new EE. I have yet to see her, how she performs, but she tends to do that job very well. Um, she will provoke whenever the enemy gains an extra turn, if I'm not. Or is it non-attack skill? However she will provoke and she... Her S3 damage is a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, next up, we have Violet. A lot of people shit on Violet. Violet is still, in my opinion, very strong, and he has answer stream like Zahak, for example. However, if you do not have a strat to deal with him, he will take over the game and you will lose. So, um, Violet is still a very solid pick. He's very annoying to go against. He essentially evades and counterattacks over and over and over again. He is still um, very strong unless you have a way to deal with him, like I said. In the C tier, we have still viable people, viable uh, characters, but they're a little bit more... You need to think a little bit more and have, the, have them set up. Uh, we have Luluka. She's great for PvE. She provides a lot of defense breaks, defense buff, uh, a barrier. She's just overall great for PvE. She does so much and works in so many um, different venues, pretty much. Uh, but she's... Not really the best at anything, but she is so great. Don't underestimate her. C tier is not bad by any means. They're still very usable units, but they require a little bit more of thinking, I would say. Or there, uh, somebody else has like an answer that is probably a little bit stronger in that specific content. Um, next up, we have Flan. Uh, Flan is honestly great for PvP and PvE. She provides defense break, uh, crit damage, buff. Uh, I use it for badge you one shot, but she if you have a really, really high speed on her, which is kind of difficult these days to get, uh, then she she can provide a um, really good cleaving opportunity. But there are others like Ram that kind of do the defense breaking and is faster. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, next up, we have Charlotte. Charlotte's great into uh, ML Landy uh, and does so much damage. Uh, she's a great pick, um, but maybe not as great as the other units because she can get pretty shut down if the opponent knows how to deal with her. Kisei is great with Amid. Uh, she's a great kind of cleave unit. Uh, however, she inc she requires incredible gear and uh, or, or setup to work properly. Ida is kind of a cleave. You could play your control, I suppose, but more of a cleave unit. Cleave, uh, she's she does fine if you set her up properly and if you go against the right opponents. But there is just a lot that can go wrong with her these days with counterattacks, and uh, that those kind of things. But she's not a bad pick. Uh, she's really she's really really fun to use. Um, Crow, uh, the lower he gets, he will smack you with his horse, and that's kind of what he does. Um, um, yeah, that's <laughs> all there is to crowd. Piron, um, he is he gains immortality when he's about to die, and then will just keep countering and deal a lot of damage. Really good against anti cleave. However, he has kind of fell off a little bit, or has he? Theoretically, Veronica counters him pretty hard with immortality dispelling, but he is by no means a bad unit, and he's a good fifth pick in RTA. 
Uh, he's really handsome. Uh, <laughs> just had to put that out there. And he has a bunny skin. So like, you know, make your choice. Um, next up, we have Vildred. Vildred is speed imprint. He increases the speed of everybody by 10 if you have him imprinted. Um, he will cleave. He's a cleave unit. And he, he's just, he's a good pick. But there are a lot of other people to do his job. But he's probably the best speed imprint, I would say, though. Next up, we have the D tier. The D tier is made up of units that I I wouldn't really recommend you. I I they have like one specific usage where they can't work and or they're just too irreliable or they're just like pay, they're they're just not as they won't provide you as much value as the other ones. But they are a lot. Some of them are a lot of fun to use. Some of them are just very difficult to gear, so they won't be very accessible to new or mid tier players. Um, we have Hua Yang, who has fallen from grace. Um, she can still deal with very high HP scaling units. Um, but, you know, you, but with as I just want to emphasize that if you really, really love a unit, then you should go for him. At the end of the day, it's the most important is to have fun and you can kind of make most units usable if you just invest enough for them. I love Lydica, for example, she is one of my all-time favorite units. I try to use it whenever I can, but you know, if you really want to get units that you can like kind of use a lot and that will help your account progression and stuff, these are probably not it. Um, and then we have the free tier. These these units are all free, so don't don't pick them. Don't pick them. You'll get them for free eventually. Um, but like I said, keep in mind that really it's just up to you. Like, what do you want? Like, what is your account lacking? Um, are you struggling against counterattacks? Then you might need Rowana and like maybe, um, you've already done so much like, and you have like one shot teams set up that might, maybe you don't need Iseria. There's so much that is like dependent on your account. So keep in mind the descriptions I gave these characters and Pick whatever thing suits you very well and what you need or what you want to pick. And at the end of the day, I play mostly for aesthetics. So I pick characters that I think look really, really cool. Um, and I have been rocking, for example, Lydica for quite some time now. <laughs> but um, if you like this sort of content, please consider leaving a like and a sub. I upload a lot of Epic 7 content these days and... Um, Tell me in the comments down below, who will you pick? And if you have any questions, please do not be afraid to leave a comment. I answer and read all of the comments. Um, and take care and I will see you guys next time. Alright, <laughs> peace out.